Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Canard Boulevard. And if you watch aviation videos on YouTube, and I know you do, then you will be seeing an epidemic of incorrectly worn seatbelts by pilots in their airplanes. Come on. The human pelvis is the largest and strongest bone in our body. It can absorb incredible amount of force, which is why lap belts are designed to wrap around it and transfer load into the pelvis. You can see from this picture that a lap belt, when properly worn, is designed to wrap right around that pelvic structure so that any crash forces are transmitted directly into the pelvis where it can be absorbed properly. Here you can see a properly worn lap belt has the buckle low in front with the shoulder harnesses buckled into it, but the lap belt itself is still low and around the hips in the pelvis. Here you can see a green belt that is properly worn, whereas the orange belt represents an improperly worn belt. In crash forces, the orange belt will push in against soft abdominal tissues, and if the forces are significant enough, can actually push in and cause a fracture of the spine. Here's a pilot that's wearing their belt improperly. This is just epidemic. You just see it everywhere for some reason. I have a feeling it's because the shoulder harnesses retract or on inertial reels, and, but you see it in Cirrus pilots more often than not where the lap belt is far too high. Here's another Cirrus pilot. You can see the shoulder harnesses are pulling up on the lap belt, which is far too loose. And as a result, that lap belt is up in the soft abdominal area. And again, this time the pilot's doing a little bit better, but he's allowing the passenger to wear the belt completely wrong, where it is well up into the abdominal area. The pilot is always responsible to make sure the passenger is wearing their seat belts correctly. And it's not just Cirrus pilots. Here's a 135 operator, again, wearing the lap belt far too high up in the abdominal area instead of across the hips. And here's a student pilot, again, not in a Cirrus this time, but wearing that lap belt far too high up in the soft abdominal area. This will cause injury in an accident. Here she is again flying with a passenger, and her passenger is wearing it much, much too high. You can see it's right across his abdomen. And here is one, again, another Cirrus. Again, lap belt far too high. Here's another pilot who's wearing his okay, but his passenger has the belt far too high across his abdomen. And this one is just insane. He's got it so high that it's actually across his ribs. I don't think it's even on his abdomen. This would cause incredible injury if he was ever in an accident. There's just no reason to wear your belt like this. I have two shoulder harnesses that go over top like this. And then I have this tang that goes through both of them and then into this buckle. Now what I normally will do is loosen off the shoulder harnesses like this and then fasten everything up. Make sure the lap belt is good and low around my hips and then crank that one tight. Once it's good and tight around my lower, you know, my pelvis, my hips, only then will I then tighten up the shoulder harnesses and that keeps everything in the correct position. What I think people are doing is they will get into the airplane, they'll hook up all their, their seat belts and then they tighten the shoulder harnesses first. And then they tighten the lap belt and look what you get. You get a lap belt that's going right across the soft port of your abdomen. That's gonna cause serious injuries or even death if you're ever in a collision because that's just gonna take all your internal organs and compress them up against your spine. That's awful. You should never be wearing your seatbelt like this. So once you get in, make sure the shoulder straps are nice and loose. Tighten your lap belt tight so it's nice and right around your hips around your pelvis around the strongest part of your body and then tighten your shoulder harnesses some airplanes and race cars have an anti-submarine strap or a crotch strap that goes from the buckle down here it's got a five point harness this is a four point if five point has one that goes between your legs and that is used as an anti-submarine so if you are especially in an airplane like this where you're actually reclined you could in theory under high g load in a crash you could actually slide and be shoved down and you slide underneath the belt out that way. And if you have a, a five point harness with a strap that goes right here, that's called an anti-submarine strap because you're gonna, not gonna submarine under the belts, that will prevent that from happening. If I had it loose, I guess I could actually 
submarine up underneath there in, in the case of an accident, I'd probably be pretty seriously injured if that were to happen. The solution to that is keep your lap belt tight. Especially if you're going into a forced landing situation, make sure your belts are as absolutely as tight as you possibly can get it. You want to be bonded to the airplane. You don't want to have any kind of momentum separate from the airplane. As the airplane slows down, you want your body to slow down at the exact same velocity. The last thing you want is to have sloppy, loose uh, webbing like this so that the airplane starts coming to a stop, you move forward and then come to a sudden stop as you hit the ed end of the, uh, the belts. That is amplifies your G-forces and that can be lethal. And something that's not talked about a lot in terms of shoulder harnesses uh, is spine compression. If your shoulder is above the anchor point, which on my airplane, it's pretty close, what can happen is in a forward crash where you're being pulled forward, because the anchor points, if they are really far down below, what they actually end up doing is pulling down. So as you, your momentum carries you forward and the belts become tight, because the anchor points are down below you, then it actually exerts a downward force. And it can be an extremely large downward force that can actually compress and fracture your spine. And if you look at racing cars, you'll see that the shoulder harnesses will go back and then usually over top of a bar that keeps them up high so that the shoulder harnesses don't compress downwards on when you, you're actually in an impact and they tighten up. So if your airplane has shoulder harnesses that have anchor points that are significantly lower than your shoulders where they come across, you might want to look at doing something about that. I hope the people that I did show featured here as wearing them incorrectly. Take this in the, in the spirit in which it's intended. I'm just trying to educate people and make sure that they're doing the right thing, the safe thing, and wearing their seat belts properly. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, corrections, please leave them in the comment section below. And of course, click like and subscribe to the channel if you can. It really helps me out. Thanks for watching.